Hello world, I'm Nick Proud, and today I want to talk to you about a feature in C-sharp called Span of T. Span of T is a type in C-sharp, which is actually a struct, meaning the value is actually assigned to the stack rather than the heap. If you're still not sure what structs are, then I'd definitely advise watching my video on structs, which is an explanation of what they are and how you can use them. So what is Span of T? Span of T is essentially a value type, which allows you to target a contiguous block of memory in C sharp. Now, when we start talking about memory, we start thinking about things like unsafe code, pointers, all that sort of stuff. And for the most part, in the past, you may have had to have got into the world of unsafe coding in order to, to manipulate data at a very forensic level. But what Span of T allows you to do is use C sharp's safe managed runtime to target very specific blocks of memory. So you could use span to look at segments of an array. You could take segments of a byte array, parts of memory that have been assigned to the heap. So it allows you to target native memory in a safe manner using the stack. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about span of T because it can become quite an advanced topic, especially considering all the different use cases that are in play. But I'm first going to demonstrate a simple use of span on an array of integers. And then I'm also going to look at some of the performance benefits that you can get from span of T, largely around string manipulation. So string manipulation can be quite expensive, but with span of T, you can mitigate some of those performance penalties that you typically see. So let's first take a look at span of T in general. Let's create an array. So let's use the old or traditional way. So we'll create a integer array and we'll just shove in some numbers so we've got a very simple array of integers and then at any point if you wanted to inspect the first index of the array or index one so actually the second index classic mistake then you could say var index one equals my array and then one so that would give us the second index in the array which would be two. Now this is all fine and there's no real need to use span for, for stuff like this. But if you wanted to slice this array, then this is where you could say, I'm going to create a new span, which automatically slices a segment of this array. So you can do this by saying, I want to create a span called my span. So new span. And because span is span of T, it takes a generic type. We can say this span will be integer and then we can pass in my array. So it will, it will be expecting an array of whichever type it is you're using. So now we've got a span of the array. We've essentially targeted that array and we can now reference it on the stack. Now this contains value types, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the stack anyway, but we could technically use this with, as I said, native code. So you could take a more complex object something that might be on the heap, and then you could take a slice of its memory and say, put it in a span, I want to do things to it. One of the examples of this might be allocating memory or native memory allocation, and then putting a span around that. So just to demonstrate on the array, we can say my span dot slice, and then you would say, starting at zero, take one index or one for the length, and that will just slice out the that portion of the data in that array now it's not taking the data away it's allowing you to view that data and then do things to it now this example is probably not very representative of a typical use case but one of the big use cases for span is its performance benefits so let's take a look at span in the context of string manipulation and then run some benchmarks to see what the performance gains are so i'm going to get rid of this code and you can see here, I've just hidden some code that I previously wrote. And this is a comparison of running a comparison on a string. That's a really interesting sentence, Nick. Using span and then using starts with. So let's just take a look at this run with starts with method first. So you've probably seen this before as a C sharp developer. Starts with is a classic helper function returns a bool and you pass it in a value. You can take a string, you can say dot, and then starts with passing in a value of your choice and a bool will be returned to say whether the string that you targeted actually starts with that value. So this method uses 
an invoice number as an example. So we've got a string called input and here is our invoice. We've set a Boolean at false. And then we're checking here to say, does this invoice ID start with INV and then return the result. So we would expect this result to be true. Just change that to assign true to result. And then if you look at this method here, run with span, we're doing the same thing, but we're going to use spans instead. So we're still setting invoice ID here to this input string, but then I'm creating a span, which encompasses this string. So that might be a little bit confusing based on the first example that I used with an array because I'm using a string, but a string really is just an array of characters. So if you said input dot as span, so your string value dot as span, it will create a span of that string in much the same way you can say to lower or to upper, which will create a uppercase or lowercase version of that string. We're creating a span of that string. Then we're going to create another span. And this span is what we're going to call our comparison span. So this is going to contain an array of characters, which is essentially our first three letters. Then just as before, I'm going to set my result equals false. And then here is where I'm going to do my alternative version of starts with. So I'm going to take the input span. So this original value as a span, and I'm going to slice off first three characters. And then I'm going to say, does the result of that, because the slice essentially creates a read only span. So this is the same as a normal span, except that you can't do anything with it other than read it. And then I'm going to say, is that the same as this span here? So this is saying, if I take off the first three letters, is it the same as this span, which contains I and V? And if so, return true. Now it seems like, well, you've gone around the houses a little bit here to do the same thing as starts with, in terms of readability, this method is much better, but here I just want to see what the benchmark results of this are. So essentially what I want to look at are how long does it take me to run each of these methods and then compare the result of that. So I'm going to use uh, benchmark.net to me, it's the simple, straightforward way of benchmarking something. I think I'm going to do a video on benchmark.net on its own. So if you're not sure what's happening here, the documentation is enough to get you this far, but I will probably do a video fairly soon on benchmark.net in general. Essentially in my console method, what I'm doing is I'm saying on benchmark runner, call the run method, and I'm passing in this class. And what that will do is it will take any of these attributes or any methods with this attribute on it, the benchmark attribute. And it will start to benchmark those methods independently. So it will run them and it will check the, the different run times and it will check any penalties or essentially just evaluate the performance of that method. And then it will give me an output, which I'll be able to use to compare the two to see how long it took them to run. So I have to run this uh, without debugging. So I'm going to start this. And then what I should see is the console app will start and start to run benchmark.net. So. I'll probably cut a part of this because it can get quite long winded, but essentially it's going to start the benchmarking process and then compile the results. This could take some time. So I'm going to let this run and then I'm going to cut to the results. Okay. So here's the outputted result from benchmark.net. And you can see here, this is the information that we're interested in. This table gives us a mean average time for running the methods. So you can see the name of the method here is run with span. And the method here is run with starts with, so we can clearly see which methods we're referring to. And the biggest takeaway is that the average runtime here is pushing 17 nanoseconds, where for run with starts with the original way or the more typical way of evaluating what is at the start of a string or well, running with a span actually took just under three nanoseconds. So it may not look like much in this context, but you can see how span in general can be more performant. So by no means am I saying, Hey, if you want to do any string manipulation, then span is always the way to go. That's not necessarily the case, but it's worth considering that span is potentially an option for manipulating strings. If you've got a lot of manipulation to do and some very specific logic. At scale, you will probably see some significant performance advantages. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, there are lots and lots of different use cases for span. 
and you can get very in-depth, especially when manipulating native memory. And that's probably for another video. But this was mainly just an introduction to Span and an example of some of the performance gains that you could see. If you found this video useful, then please do like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And it's a massive help to the channel. If you are using Span and you found there's some problems with it or you absolutely love Span, I would love to hear from you. It's a new area for me. It's not something I've used much, but in my limited experience of it, I found it really fascinating. Stick with the channel for more .NET content and I will see you next time.